Hey everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. How are you? I am fine. I hope you are too. Uh, as you see, I'm still on vacation from my sofa while we are in the middle of moving. I hope to be back to the sofa squad with my sofa fam. Probably in about a week and a half, officially. So, in the meantime, we have to deal with Mother Nature, which I don't have a problem with. Anyways, so... Today, I wanted to, or I should say in this video, I've actually recorded a couple of them today uh, because I cannot leave the Tim Jones Jr. case alone. Um, I mean, oh my gosh, y'all, I just, I can't even. If there was, if you look at the words, I can't even, uh, I, I believe that the trial is next to it in the dictionary. So, <laughs> anyways, I have lots of questions about it, and now the reality is this, so... I watched the opening statements, I did the video on that, and the trial's been going on for, I think, two or three days now or something like that, and I have watched some of the testimony. I've not been watching it live. Um, I have been watching some of the testimony, but um, I talked about this in one of my live chats where I went and read the timeline, and so I wanted to go here. I mean, honestly, I just wanted, kind of wanted to read it again where I have time to read it, and so I want to do a video of this, me reading through it and kind of just thinking out loud some of the questions that I have. So... Feel free to chime in in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think, and we can do a live chat over this uh, and discuss it more or whatever. So, with that being said, let's begin. So, here we go. Now, this starts off, so I'm just going to say this a little bit right here. Uh, so, this information is compiled from the Lexington County Court Files and the South Carolina Department of Social Services Records. And so, again, I'm not claiming this is the end-all, be-all timeline here. This is just one I found online. And... Uh, I want to go through it. So here we go. <clears throat> okay, and now this starts off, I mean, you know, early. So bear with me here, everybody. March for, or hold on. March 2001st, Timothy Jones Jr., 19, arrested on cocaine charge. September 2001, Jones is charged in a crime spree, including burglary, car theft, and forged checks. March 2002, so this is like almost a year later, Jones is sentenced to seven years in Illinois prison. Now, this is where, this seems weird to me, and I don't know if it's a typo, and y'all help me out here. Okay, so March 2002, he's sentenced to seven years in prison. January 2003, Jones is released from prison. So I'm like, this is like months, almost a year later, but less than, if he was sentenced to seven years, how did he walk out? I mean, I don't know. I mean, is that what happened? It just seems weird to me. Or is this like a typo in the article? Um, so, June 2004, Timothy Jones, 22, and Amber, 18, marry in a suburb west of Chicago. 2006, I'm going to pronounce this right name wrong, and I'm sorry, Murad Gracie Jones is born. 2007, Elias Jones is born. 2008, Nathan Jones is born. So we have boom, 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 we kid each year. 2011. Uh, Timothy Jones graduates from Mississippi State University with a degree in computer engineering and shortly after gets a job with Intel in Columbia, South Carolina. Okay, so this is still 2011 that I'm reading from. September 5th, a complaint made to DSS after Jones family visits relatives in Mississippi. So, and again, I'm just talking this through. So September 5th, they clearly visited somebody in Mississippi and this family member, I guess, felt something was going on and made a complaint to the DSS. So I, I need to investigate that more and again, chime in in the comment section. Uh, and then I, this might come out in testimony. I'm not sure, you know, then the trial, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so September 16th and the 22nd, DSS visits home, unsuccessful at making contact. September 29th, DSS find pregnant Amber Homeschool children, three, four, and five, clean and in good health, and some clutter in the home. So that sounds, I mean, you know, depends on what their version of clutter is, but that sounds like anybody's house. Uh, September 30th, DSS finds a home cleaner. So uh, depending on what the clutter version was, I mean, you know, they're getting a home cleaner for them. I find that interesting. So it must be beyond what normal clutter is. I don't know. Um... October 18th, almost a month later, DSS finds home cluttered, air vent, and flora uncovered. So this sounds a little sketchy. Uh, possibly, you know, not safe for a child or whatever. Uh, October 21st, DSS finds a home, home cleaner. Oh, wait. You know what? <laughs> Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make light of this. I thought they meant, like, a housekeeper. <laughs> Oh, they meant a housekeeper. I was like, oh my God, that's a little benefit. Um, 
They meant they found the home cleaner. <laughs> Got it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This just brings a whole new light to it. Because I was like, well, my gosh, like, how nice of them to help Amber out. And, you know, they found the home kind of cluttered, so they hired, they found a home cleaner. They meant they came back and found the home cleaner. Okay, here we go. Sorry. So, um, October 21st, DSS finds home cleaner. October 24th, a supervisor recommends case be unfounded. October 28th, Timothy Jones is hostile toward DSS caseworker during a visit. Police assist Jones giving list of what needs to be cleaned and fixed. Family stays in a hotel. DSS says the case is for risk of injury due to condition of home, not neglect. So clearly there's issues going on with his house and stuff. Uh, and the disarray and things laying out, whatever. Um, October 31st, DSS finds only Timothy Jones at home and house extremely clean. That's interesting. Um... November 4th, a supervisor lists case as unfounded. December 9th, the case is reassigned to a new DSS caseworker. Okay, that's it for that year, 2011. So here's just a couple of things I want to say about this. So you see these visitors are like, boom, 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 boom. Now, obviously we know at this point in time, um, you know, clearly some intervention was needed on, on over here. But when you see these cases go on of where social services, DSS, get involved in a scenario where they're just like, boom, boom. And it needs to be that way. Because how many times do we sit here and it goes back and forth? I have known people, like not personally, but I was talking to a friend about this the other day. And one of her friends was talking about a situation with her, her kid. DSS got involved and it was, you know, almost like a simple mistake type thing was made. Um... But it was years of, I mean, it was ridiculous. It was years. And, you know, her friend wasn't somebody that was, like, going to endanger this child or do anything crazy like that. Um, so you go back and forth. Then you get these cases like this where DSS is all in it and all up in it. And then this horrific tragedy happens. So it's like, well, what do you do? It's better to be safe than sorry as far as I'm concerned. Better to be safe than sorry. Because we've seen so many of these cases where, you know, DSS or probation officers are coming to the house and this, that, and the other. You know, and it's like, well, you want people to have their rights and stuff like this. But then it turns out, oh, they had somebody uh, in the basement the whole time or, you know, whatever. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, sorry if people are put out a little bit because I mean reading this I'm just like well yeah if somebody had some kind of like you know this wasn't like you know some crazy situation yeah I mean DSS is breathing down their backs but clearly each time they go there's something going on here so but then it gets switched to a new caseworker you know and it's just like okay so I mean in so many of these situations I have never dealt with DSS uh, personally on this level um, at all now Matt and I went through a fostering uh, process at one point and so we had to deal with like that you know world or whatever and I mean that was just like oh my god that'll be a whole other story time so I can't imagine what would happen like if you're in a situation where, you know, caseworkers are coming in and saying your your home's not fit or this isn't fit because I'm just like, oh, my gosh, just looking at the process to get approved to, you know, foster kids and stuff like that. I mean, my God, it's insane. So I can only imagine if they have a reason, like you've given them proof that things aren't good. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, let's keep going. Um, 2012, Gabriel Jones is born. February 25th, DSS finds children in good health and unharmed and home meets minimal standard. So they were doing better, apparently, somewhat. April 25th, DSS finds home, finds home meets minimal standard. Timothy and Amber Jones have separated, and children are living with Amber. Now, here's where this is, you know, we've, we've heard about this. Early May, Timothy Jones establishes care with a marriage and family therapist. May 29th, DSS visits and provides a plan to address housekeeping issues. Amber Jones tells DSS she filed domestic violence report previous weekend dss suggests she go to a shelter but amber refuses so you know this is where things are beginning to get even you know truly sketchy um let's see june 7th timothy and amber file jones file for divorce timothy jones takes three children hold on let's read this one over june 7th timothy and amber jones file for divorce Timothy Jones takes three oldest children to his father's home in Mississippi. June 11th, Timothy Jones says he found his wife with a 19-year-old next-door neighbor at 7.30 a.m. and says she is having an affair with him. 
So in this little section here, I get confused. Uh, and again, y'all probably know more about this at this point than I do because I haven't jumped out. I haven't been watching the testimony over the last few days or following it prior to the trial. So they separated. She, there's something where something's going on where they're not living together is when I'm taking this. When DSS comes back and says there's housekeeping issues and Amber says, I filed a, D, you know, a domestic violence thing and they're telling her to go to a shelter. So maybe he went to her house and assaulted her is what I'm getting. That maybe they're not, cause I guess I'm like, why do they want her to go to a shelter if they're separated? That's my question. Um, so then they file for divorce. Then a few days later, he says that he found his wife with a 19-year-old neighbor next door at 7.30 a.m. So does that mean that he found that after they divorced, or is that why? Because I'm kind of like, well, if you're separated and doing this, I mean, I don't know what their agreement is, but and I get that doesn't, just because you're separated and all this doesn't mean that he doesn't still have feelings. But it's just like, well, you know, you filed for divorce on the 7th, and on the 11th is talking about you found her with the next door neighbor. So that's why I'm a little bit confused over that because I'm just like, okay, well, you know, she can do what she wants to at this point. You know what I'm saying? Um, but again, that timeline might be, I might be off on that. Y'all let me know. Let's continue. June 18th, Amber Jones tells DSS her husband took children to live with his father. DSS tells Amber Jones to contact police and an attorney and to go to a shelter. June 26, Amber Joan goes to Mississippi to get children, but husband's relatives refuse to turn them over. Now that right there. And again, I don't know anything about anyone in this case right here, so I don't know if there was legitimate reason to keep them from her. But I mean, you know, I mean, to me, this sounds like he kidnapped them. Now I know, and we might not have gotten to this yet, that, okay, wait, we're getting to it in a second, so hold on one second. So she goes, the husband's relatives refused to turn them over. That's the 26th. July 30th, Timothy Jones is granted custody, temporary custody of the four children. Uh, let's see. So something happened in there. See this timeline, and again, it's a quick timeline, but there's parts that are missing, obviously, to me. So, because I'm like, well, she went on the 26th to get the children. The relatives won't have them. And then the 30th, he's granted temporary custody. So, what took place between that? And like, that tells me that something happened in that time that somehow he got custody from her, which is usually not the norm. You know what I mean? Like, this usually... It's usually opposite. Usually the mother gets custody of the children. So that I'm curious why that took place. So August 16th, pardon me. Uh, let's see. Jones takes four, uh, takes the four children to Mississippi. Amber Jones, who is six months pregnant. No, hold on. So August 16th, Jones, meaning Timothy, takes the four children to Mississippi. Weren't they already there? Amber Jones, who is six months pregnant, goes to Ohio to visit her mother. So, and again, these are just the records, so it's not connecting the dots completely. But, uh, October 16th, DSS closes the case scene. Risk is reduced and service is no longer needed. December 2nd, the Jones' fifth child, Abigail Elizabeth, whose name was later changed to Elaine Marie, is born. 2013, sorry, these bugs are getting to me. February 8th, Amber and Timothy Jones attend a divorce hearing. The children are in Mississippi, with uh, Timothy Jones' family. September 2nd, so many months later, Amber and Timothy Jones agree to terminate their marriage upon written agreement. October, the Jones divorce is final and Timothy Jones is award awarded primary custody. At the time of the divorce, Amber Jones is 27 and Timothy is 31. So he gets primary custody of these children, which again is just, it's not the norm. And I, don't, <clears throat> I haven't researched enough or heard enough yet to know why that is. Um, so I'm curious to see. So 2014, May 5th, South Carolina Department of Social Services and deputies interview Jones after allegations of abuse. Children tell DSS father likes to horseplay and makes them do exercises for punishment. Children do not seem afraid of father, DSS says. One had a mark on his neck, according to DSS. May 6th, DSS goes to children's school for follow-up and sees no marks on them. So the next day, the next day, you know, they catch them off guard at school, away from the dad, I imagine that's what that was about. May 15th, <clears throat> pardon me, May 15th, DSS finds family celebrating the oldest child's birthday with cupcakes. Cute. Jones tells DSS the children's mother has not seen them in four months and has walked out on him for a younger man. Caseworker says Jones' interaction with the children is good. 
So, again, you know, I need to research this part. There's a lot of questions with Amber that I have, and I know that she, a lot of people have told me about that she went into somebody else's live chat and talked and whatnot, and I just need to go find that live chat because I'm, I have so many questions with Amber just about, and I'm not being accusatory or anything like that at this point, but there's just, I mean, you can see reading this where there is a lot of like, well, why did this happen and why did that happen? What's going on here? Da, 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 da. So that's it. I'm not trying to place blame on anybody here. I don't her at all. I just have questions. Um, let's say June 16th, Timothy Jones admits to DSS that he has physically disciplined the children and DSS provides a safety plan with no physical discipline allowed. The house is reportedly clean. Okay. Um, August 7th. DSS and deputies examine children after an allegation of physical abuse. They do not release who made the complaint. A caseworker says Jones appeared to be overwhelmed as he is unable to maintain the home, but the children appear to be clean, groomed, and appropriately dressed. DSS has 45 days for a follow-up visit. August 28th. Jones picks up his three older children at their elementary school and his two other children from their daycare. Also on August 28th, Jones is charged with unlawful neglect after he puts his one-year-old at unreasonable risk of harm when he, force <clears throat> when he forces her and four of her siblings out of a car near a Walmart in Lexington County, according to deputies. Um, I'm guessing that this is something where he got mad at them and put them out on the side of the road or something. Again, I don't know. So y'all are probably going to be all over in the comments. By all means, let me know. Um, because it does, I mean, it sounds bizarre. Um, I've had my parents threaten me with that when I was a younger kid. It was a different time, but they never actually did it. Uh, and I probably would have well deserved it, to be quite honest. Um, September 1st, a couple of days later. Jones stops at a Dunkin' Donuts in Spartanburg. During a drive that took him through North and South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi, investigators believe the children were already dead and their bodies were in Jones' Cadillac, Jones's Cadillac Escalade. So their thing is, so they they knew that the child was alive on uh, August 28th. There's proof of that, I guess. Um, and then they they're thinking that September 1st the kids were dead. I mean, oh my gosh, y'all, it's just awful. Uh, September 2nd, Jones's three school-aged children are again absent from their elementary school and they miss a scheduled visit to their mother's home. Uh, September 3rd, Amber Jones reports her ex-husband and the children, and names all the children, missing and the search for them begins. September 6th, please hold. September 6, Jones is stopped at a vehicle safety checkpoint in Smith County, Mississippi. He is arrested on DUI and drug possession charges and held in jail. Officers determine that the children have been reported missing in South Carolina. Blood and cleaning materials are found in the car, and the absence of the children indicates foul play, investigators say. Now, let's pause right there for a second. In the testimony, now this is the part I did see the testimony. I think it was like the first day when they're interviewing that detective. And she was like, the fr I don't know what kind of detective she was, but she seemed to be the one that did the car and like took all the evidence in. Um, so she is showing all the bleach stains and all this stuff. And it's just like, wow. Um, I mean, it, it, grotesque because it just paints a picture of like what happened these dead bodies in the car. September 8th, Lexington County charges Jones with unlawful conduct toward a child and order to hold him while the search for the children continues. So they knew. I mean, they, they knew at this point. They were just like, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, you've seen the pictures of the car with the bleach all in the back and the stains. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's not good, you know. So you know from this, the kids are missing. I mean, five kids don't go missing. So... Um, September 9th, the next day, Jones begins to cooperate with investigators and leads them to the bodies of his five children on a rural road in Alabama. Lexington County Sheriff's crime scene investigators travel to Alabama to process evidence. I mean, my God, can you imagine being the investigators on this and having to go to this scene? I mean, how, I mean, just the, the, the horror, the tragedy of the entire thing. Uh, September 10th, Jones signs a waiver of extradition. Uh, September 11th, Jones is brought back to Lexington County from Mississippi and is charged with five counts of murder. Uh, let's see. Ch September 12th, Jones waives his first court appearance, saying he didn't want to further the spectacle. 2015, uh, 11th Circuit Solicitor Donald Myers served notice that prosecutors will seek the death penalty. <clears throat> 
2016, April, Amber Jones files lawsuit against South Carolina Department of Social Services. I have lots of questions about that, and we'll get to it. 2017, Amber Jones files lawsuit against five retailers she says sold her ex-husband synthetic marijuana. She says he was under the influence of the drugs when he killed the children. We'll get to that, too. I have lots of questions about that. Um, 2018, February trial, February, trial scheduled, but prosecutors end up pushing it back. 2019, May 2nd, jury selection begins in the death penalty trial of Timothy, Timothy Jones Jr. May 14th, opening statements are made and the trial gets underway. So, I've been asking these questions all along through this, you know, video, and these are the last two questions, that, and again, I need to research this some, and I'm curious to know... I hope I can go find the live chat that she was in and hear what they said. Because this part right here, and I don't even know if this is accurate. So, again, I don't want to make accusations or anything. But, <clears throat> you know, the file suit against the South Carolina Department of Social Services. Um, I mean, if they miss something major, I mean, I get it. I mean, the man killed five children. His five children. So, I know that there's this talk about the synthetic marijuana now, y'all, I mean, when I was coming up, it, it was, everybody just had good old regular, you know, drugs. You know? <laughs> I mean, I hate to sit here and even say say that, but this synthetic stuff that they sell at the gas station and all that, I mean, just, you know, it just sounds like crazy stuff comes from that. Am I trying to say that that's the reason why he did this? Absolutely not. So, I, I'm questioning why she's suing the five retailers. That's, I mean, who are these retailers? Why is she suing them? Is it, were the, all the, I mean, is this still going on? Is it even a case? You know, was there a, a reasoning behind it, you know, almost like to make a point, or was it for money, or like, what was it for? So I need to research that, and if anybody has information on it, you know, drop it like it's hot down below, um, because I'm curious about that, like what the motivation was for. So take any of all that out. I mean, this is a horrible crime. It's a horrible crime, and there's nothing else to say about it. I mean, five innocent children were killed, and the circumstances around it are bizarre. And I know that his lawyer is, you know, it's his job. I said this in my last video about it to try and get, you know, him off the death penalty and the trial and all that stuff. But, I mean, he has very little to work with as far as I'm concerned. I mean, this guy, you know, I think he knew exactly what he was doing. I think he might have had a moment of rage, sure, but a lot of us do, and we don't do stuff like that. Uh, but this whole thing of, oh, the marijuana, the marijuana. I want I did it, and you know, uh, he, I, he's social or uh, schizophrenic, and this and the other. I mean, I just I don't believe it. Um, I don't believe it. So, I mean, it's it's just it's an absolute tragedy. It is just horrific. And I know I just keep saying the same thing over, but I don't know. I mean, that's just it's all that resonates with me. It's just so I'm so dumbfounded, and I find myself. I mean, you know, if you follow me, you know I've been moving and doing this stuff. So it's very hard for me to not sit down and start watching this because I'm just like. I mean, I will start watching it. I'm like, Paul, you have to walk away. You have to walk away. You have to come back to it. So I, I want to listen to more of the testimony and get some more facts and stuff about what's going on. So anyways, uh, I hope you all enjoyed this. Again, please drop some comments. Let me know your opinions, your thoughts, what you all know about it. Uh, and we'll keep going and researching it. Y'all take care. Love you. Bye.